The 3D printing has really changed the way we, we reconstruct these. We used to use the patient's own uh, skull, which would require a much bigger incision, a much bigger surgery, bigger uh, recovery, and with not the same kind of uh, consistent results. So using the 3D printed um, implants, we're able to get the patients back to work, to school, to play, uh, with long-lasting results that uh, truly should stand the test of time. And we certainly saw that in Clara's case. Yeah. Now, as we're talking about bioprinting, this really involves you, Dr. Ravnik. Talk to us about your lab and the futures that you hold there. Yeah, so as plastic surgeons, our job are, is to re, really reconstruct all types of uh, defects that are caused by cancer or congenital defects or trauma, for example. And as plastic surgeons, we're trained basically in the, in the principle that we try to use um, extra tissue to restore those defects. Our lab really focuses on using excess tissue as spare parts to retrieve the cells, typically adult stem cells, that we uh, potentially hope to be able to use as bioing for the printing process with the idea of um, building tissues and organs in the lab eventually in the future for a customized uh, replacement for the patient. Wow, how exciting is that? And Dr. Sampson, what other cases and clinical situations would you use this same type of implant? Yeah. So this type of uh, 3D printed implant can be used in uh, trauma situations uh, where great segments of the skull have been lost. Uh, cancer patients who have lost uh, uh, large portions of very difficult uh, contoured, uh, as in these cases, uh, the 3D printing allows us to get, again, a custom implant that matches perfectly to the opposite side. And when it's done, as is in Clara's case, you would never be able to tell that anything was actually done. And that's the goal.